Lucia, I am so excited to have you here. We are not only internet friends, but like I consider us to be real life friends at this point. You've been one of my earliest supporters and I am just so inspired by your incredible journey to entering this new world of Web3 as an artist and how you've actually been able to monetize your passion, which is for arts, for the visual arts. I think that's something that a lot of people can identify with, this idea of like having this passion, having this gift that you want to share with the world. But oftentimes what I find in our community is that we get talked out of it because it's not the responsible thing to do, right? Like you don't go try to be like an artist or like a musician and shit. Like we don't do stuff like that. Like you go get an accounting degree. And so you are so representative of like saying, fuck that. No, we're going to create something amazing using the talents and gifts that I've been given. First of all, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, and then we're going to dive into how you've actually been able to make this happen. Well, first of all, Janice, thank you so much for having me. I've been a longtime listener of the podcast, so this is kind of like a dream come true, first of all. And second, my name is Lucia Diaz. My focus is the art of Latina representation. The reason why is because I never saw myself represented in history books, in media, in entertainment in a positive light. So I am creating artwork in order for Latinas to feel seen and celebrated. That way, for me, like I feel like the imposter syndrome that a lot of us deal with kind of goes away a little bit. And I'm super blessed and honored to have a very supportive group of mentors just like you, Janice, that have guided me through this journey. It's not easy, I could tell you that for sure, but it's something that I knew I was born to do. I knew I was born to work for myself and not for someone else, not creating someone else's wealth. I'm super excited and honored to be here. So let's get started. All right. So let's dive into your origin story. So first of all, how did you know that you had this gift for creation? Because I think when we're kids, it's very easy for us to be creative. Our imaginations are typically fostered just because of the environments that we're in and I think as adults, we kind of forget how to harness that imagination and how to become creative. So when did you first realize that like you had this gift? Well, I've been illustrating and sketching and drawing on everything and anything I could get my hands on since I was a kid. I remember growing up in my grandfather's farm, every summer would go to Colombia and I would just start drawing on things like costales and <laughs> he would be so sweet and tell me, mija, por favor, no, no dibujos en los costales, te voy a comprar un libro. So my grandpa, Jose Manuel, got me my first sketchbook. And then my grandmother, Lucia Diaz, was the first person to purchase the commission piece when I was 10 years old. So that moment made me realize, you know, I could do this for real. And especially my mom's side of the family was super supportive. My father's side, not so much. They would say, oh, te vas a morir de hambre. Like, you're not going to make it. You're not going to do anything with this. Except for one aunt, Luz Mila. She was super creative. She was like kind of like the black sheep of the family as well, like me. And she taught me how to sew. She taught me how to do all these like creative things. And she pushed me and said, just do what you want to do. Don't live somebody else's life. And so for, for a long time, I had those voices in my head, specifically like my dad's voice saying, no, you need to go get a degree, you need to do this. But throughout my whole journey, I went through art school. I My mom said, hey, we're going to find an art school. And even if I have to make triple the arepas I used to make, I'm going to do it. And so she really wanted me to go after my dreams because she didn't have that opportunity. And so I did go to art school. I graduated in BFA in illustration with a minor in motion graphics and graphic design. So I did the responsible thing, which was get a career or at least dip my feet into like little things that I could do as a nine to five as a graphic designer. But after my nine to five, I went to work, honey. I like illustrated in my sketchbook. Then I upgraded to an iPad and I just realized, you know, this is what I was born to do. I remember the moment I sat in my room when I got my first computer and I tested out Microsoft Paint. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is who I want to be. And the term digital illustrator wasn't even coined yet. Like it it wasn't even born, but it was because of powerful women and men in my family, like my grandparents and my mom that pushed me and said, you know what? I believe in you. We're going to figure it out. Even if we don't have the money to do it, we'll figure it out. And luckily I was able to go to art high school, art magnet. 
So if there are any moms listening out there and you have kids that are creative, check out art magnet schools in your area because those are free resources that you can have your kids take art classes for free. You don't have to pay these crazy fees to have your kids illustrate and draw. And then also YouTube University. You can learn pretty much anything through YouTube, any program. So I'm really grateful for my mom, my grandmother, and my grandpa, because if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would be able to believe in that, that I could be an artist. And it's reflective of our society and Latin culture that they don't know, they haven't seen other ways of making income. So they think, oh, you just have to become a doctor or a lawyer, go to a big tech company and have a safe job. And so after the pandemic, we realize there is no such thing as a safe job. Like the day of tomorrow, somebody could let go of you. So yeah, I love the fact that you had people in your corner. And oftentimes I find that that is what makes the difference for people. It's like, if you are the only one who believes in you, it's so much harder to make shit happen because there's nobody there to combat those voices in your head. And unless you're like hella disciplined and super like into personal development and really combating that, like it's very easy to become your own worst enemy. And sometimes you need those external voices. So the power of community and just like curating a circle that believes in you, maybe even before you believe in yourself is like so powerful. Let's talk about the big career because you found yourself in Amazon of all places. And I'm like, how does one go from like this dream of being an illustrator and like having your own business to ending up at like the biggest corporation arguably in the world? And I know you had some life lessons there that taught you like, this is not where I need to be. So tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. So I ascended my corporate ladder career through beauty and tech. And every single job, I tried to figure things out. I tried to be an art director, a wanted to make sure that I launch products internationally. And so with Amazon, I remember when I applied, I had no idea. I didn't have any connections. I literally didn't have anybody working there. And I was trying to get out of Miami at that point because I just was feeling very suffocated by a lot of the negative chatter of people just not understanding or believing what I do. And that's including family and friends that I love, like people that care for me and want me to succeed. But they didn't understand like me collaborating after my nine to five with Chanel and DBF and Karina Herrera, like that's the end goal. The nine to five was just paying the bills. So I graduated during a recession. So I heavily like went into design, graphic design and It was because like there were just no illustration jobs out there. When you were coming out of school, you really needed to build up your portfolio. And with that, I didn't want to put pressure on myself as an artist to only solely rely on creating art and just doing art, but really finding different skills that I enjoyed and that I loved. And so I learned how to use Final Cut Pro and I started making viral videos with influencers and beauty brands. And this is before like YouTube was a thing. So just researching and learning. And then from there, I wanted to make sure whenever I launched a product internationally to build out teams in those regions. So those products feel authentic to that customer, not just like Google translate something in French or something in Portuguese or something in Spanish. That doesn't work. I really wanted to make sure whenever I delivered any experience that the customer was first and that they were going to enjoy the experience and they were going to understand the product. So I think with that, like I kind of just started venturing on thinking about, okay, I want to go to the West Coast because I want to work in tech and I wanted that big salary. And ladies, if you are interested in tech and, and doing all that stuff, I say, if you really want to do it, just know that you can just research on YouTube, like, especially when you're applying to these big companies, what type of interview questions are they going to give you? What are their leadership principles? And with that, like, take those principles and (laughs) make a list of 20, 50 examples for each one and make sure that you know how to present yourself and know how to give that story of who you are and why you're such an asset. And so with that, I worked my way up through Amazon. I started with Merch by Amazon as a visual designer. With that role, I launched products for Cartoon Network, for Neil deGrasse Tyson on Merch by Amazon. And then I 
realized there are other openings in the company. And so I just started applying to other openings and I saw that Prime Video was looking for somebody to launch in Mexico. That's me. That's the person that could do it. And at first I was really like, oh my God, this is my dream job. I'm working at one of the top corporations in the world and I'm doing what I want to do, which is the representation of my people, the Latin community, making sure that I deliver products for them. And then I hit many brick walls, which were in, I would say, human flesh brick walls, where people didn't quite understand that you just can't do string translations of a specific region and just send it to India and then bring it back. No, you have to build out teams. You have to make sure that this product that you're going to deliver makes sense and that you cannot copy and paste a strategy from one region to another region. And so the launch of Prime Video Mexico was a success. I think the first week they it ranked up $2 million of subscription, which is insane. Uh, one of the biggest for an external territory. I was like, wow, like I'm here as an art director I'm with a team. We built out all of the assets in Spanish. We made sure that everything was just perfect. Even just as a Colombian, I know that their words in Mexico that could be offensive if I say in the dialect that I know, which is the Spanish that I grew up with, Colombian Spanish. So that's another thing. Like I learned so many things and being able to work with a team that's so passionate as well. Like the team in Mexico, they were like my family. I feel like I couldn't have done it without them. And it was so much pressure and I didn't sleep for two weeks. It was a beautiful, incredible launch. But guess what? Like my health took a toll. Right after that launch, I was hospitalized. I just was not in control of myself and my person. My habits have slipped. Like a lot of things that I just started putting on the back burner, like not eating on time. And just working, pushing through the clock and working crazy hours, not seeing my husband, not seeing my cats. You know, my cats were mad at me for a long time. I realized that this this art director dream at Prime Video was my parents' dream. It wasn't my dream. Mm -hmm. This is not what I wanted to do. This is what my parents kind of kept nudging me and saying, this is what you're supposed to do. You need to have a responsible job and you need to do the things that will keep the lights on. And we lived in scarcity when we were little. And so I remember my parents migrating from Colombia from a tough situation. We have family members in Colombia that were kidnapped. So we came from a situation where we were scared. There was scarcity. And my parents thrived here because they worked so hard and they just really wanted just the best for us, for me and my brother. So college was like, you had to go to college. My brother, I love him. And when he had to go to college, like I remember that point where I was like, you got to apply to FAFSA. You have to apply to all these scholarships. And I remember just feeling like, wow, like the way my parents treat me is maybe the way I was treating my brother as well. And now he's amazing. He's an anthropologist and doing great. He just had twins, which thank God he's the one that that had kids in the family. But like going through this journey, I realized I'm trying to impress and make someone else happy. I'm not trying to make myself happy. I'm trying to be a people pleaser. I'm trying to make my parents proud because that phrase, el que dirán. And that is something that I realized just wasn't serving me. And then 2020, the pandemic hit, and guess what? I got laid off and I was devastated. My whole identity was wrapped up into pleasing my parents and being the good first gen daughter that accomplished everything and was like, the hero of the family, you know, that would be the superstar. And my husband saw how dark it got for me. And he's like, girl, you need to go to therapy. (laughs) I was like, you know what? You're right. And because of that, going to therapy, I realized all of those things that I just mentioned, me being a people pleaser, me trying to do things for others, me trying to put my parents' needs first before my own. And I'm an adult. I've been doing this for the last 35 years, always thinking of my parents first and how is it that I can help them before I can help myself. So going to therapy really did heal me and it really made me realize what is it that I need to do in order to really find out what are the things that I need to do for myself, for my health, 
And also, what does happiness to me? What does success mean to me? That's hella powerful. What a friggin' story. First of all, like there's so many gems in what you just talked about. Do you know, like I can identify with so much of your story of just feeling like one day you wake up and you're like, holy shit, this is not the life that I signed up for. I don't even know whose life this is, but I don't want it. And the responsibility that we feel towards the sacrifices that our parents made, it's almost just like you want to make that worth it, but at what cost to you? And it's a hard thing to balance. And it's a lot of internal struggle that many people who listen to this podcast can identify with. So thank you for sharing that. So you find yourself laid off 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. What's your next move? What do you do? Okay. So before I got laid off, I've been listening to your podcast and I started my emergency fund right away. I remember you saying we have to have an emergency fund. And so literally (laughs) I ran back home after work and said, Jonathan, we need to have an emergency fund. Luckily, We've been saving a big portion of our paycheck, like almost my whole paycheck, and just living off of my husband's. That way, if in case something happens to him, because he also has health conditions, I have health conditions, at least we have that pocket of money that could help us for a rainy day. And so I literally saved up a whole year's worth of salary. And I said, you know what? I'm not buying the Chanel bag. I'm not buying a going out to eat. I would even invite friends over and be like, let's just watch a movie and <laughs> I'll make a rock boy or something like that. Because I realized like going to these fancy places to eat or doing these like extravagant things, like getting a Chanel purse, like that wasn't fulfilling for me. Like I felt like it was just a trap. And a lot of my dad's side of the family just is like that. They it's materialistic. Like they want it to look a certain way, like your life to look a certain way, the big mansion, the big house, the beautiful car. But then they broke and they don't got insurance and like all these other things. And I'm like, that's not the aspiration. Like I'm making the most money that I've ever made with this job. So let me do something productive with it. Let me save it. Let's start investing. I opened a 401k thanks to you. Like I literally did all the things. And so I had a safety net and a lot of women don't like, especially right now, I've had a friend that was laid off with me at 2020 and now she's being laid off again. So this is again, like the big lesson. These corporations do not give a fuck about you. You are just a number to them. So building a side hustle is like an insurance policy for yourself. So yeah, so I I saved up and then I asked my husband during the pandemic, can we just move back to the East Coast because I can't find an empanada in Seattle. And so I I told my husband, let's go somewhere else. I don't want to go back to Florida. The pandemic was crazy. um, And we both had health conditions that were very scary during that time. And so I told him, let's go to another state. And so we decided to go to Maryland. His aunt and uncle live here and we lived with them for six months. And they are like the most kindest, incredible people I've ever met. And those are the people I aspire to. They have all the things, but they don't focus on designer brands. Like they live comfortably. They don't have kids. And for me, it looked like these are the type of people I want to be around because these are the type of people I want to become. I want to become someone that is independent, that feels okay with just staying at home and hanging out with your friends and not having to act or be something that you're not. A lot of us do things or buy things to impress the wrong people. Facts. That's a whole word right there, y'all. That might be the quote of the episode, okay? Stop living your life according to people that you don't even like. Okay. To impress people you don't even like. That shit is so stupid. And I think we fall victim to that, especially in when you're first gen, there's almost like this pressure to perform, to like show everybody that you made it, blah, blah, blah. And like, you're just going to end up repeating the same cycle of scarcity just with fancier labels. Okay. So one of the things that I find incredible about you is like the vast number of ways that you've been able to monetize your skill set as a graphic designer, artist, illustrator, et cetera. Talk me through that initial monetization. So you mentioned you were already side hustling while you were working nine to five. So how did you start doing that? And then how did you now get to a place where like you're doing this full time? I started creating different streams of income. 2010 was when I started. So I started selling iPhone cases. I literally just put my art on iPhone cases and I would sell it myself at fairs. And then I started thinking, what are other things that I could do? I started selling products on Etsy. 
I started making stickers. And then I started seeing that there are people that actually go to like boutiques and do live sketching. And so me and my mom go to Ball Harbor and I have like a huge stack of business cards and I literally go into every single boutique. I'm like, Chanel, here you go. Here's my business card. Let's do a Mother's Day brand activation. Before even going to that stuff, I researched like, what are these brands doing? Why are these brands doing it? What are some holidays that you can work with them to create these beautiful activations where they're going to pay you? a really great fee for you to come into the store and do something super personalized for their VIP customers. So position yourself as an artist. Like, what do you want to do? Like, who do you want to be as an illustrator? Because there's infinite routes. There is also, like, if you want to do editorial illustration, I started going to Barnes and Noble and looking at all the magazines and going to the masthead and looking at who's the art director, who's the intern, who's the assistant art director. And I would send them postcards back in the day when we would use snail mail. And honestly, it was so gratifying to get answers back and even feedback from them and say, hey, we love your portfolio. You should do a little bit more lifestyle illustrations. And so then the next time I would send them a postcard, I would edit that and give them the style that they were looking for. And it takes a while to find your style. And you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other artists or other people that are out there, especially if you're just starting out. Do not compare your chapter two to your chapter to somebody else's chapter 65 because it ain't going to work. And the other thing is get yourself a mentor, get yourself someone that is already doing this or has done it for five years, 10 years and get on a call with them, ask them for coffee, go have lunch with them. And so I regularly do this with lots of women in my industry, like Reina Noriega. She's another illustrator. I'm looking into, okay, how can I start scaling my products to get them into Target, get them into other places where people could see my illustrations? So I think of art and illustration as not just like fine art, but really how can I use this artwork? on a product so someone could use it. And then what is my why and who is my ideal customer? Like who is the person that's gonna purchase this? Who is this for? So again, there's the services side, which is like the boutiques, but then there's also the product side. Also in 2020, my my prima, Jasmina, she is an Afro-Latina and has this beautiful Afro and I wanted to get her a graduation card. And I couldn't find one. And I was so angry and so mad because I'm like, all of these cards are white. Like none of these look like my prima. And so I decided, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and create my own greeting card for her. And I gave it to her. (laughs) And all of her friends at school were like, oh, I want one too. And so I just started illustrating the back of her friend's heads. And from there, I just launched this graduation collection. I realized like, again, during 2020, I made a list of all the Latin holidays that are not celebrated by Hallmark, by American Greetings. And I said, you know what, this is an open space for me to not only have Latinas see themselves in my artwork, but also making sure that I do something that I am passionate about. You can get up and draw every day, but you need to have a flame and a fire and make sure that you know why is it you get up and why you illustrate. And for me, it's to make someone feel seen and celebrated. Also, if you're on Etsy, try opening a Shopify. There's also Caseify, where you can get your artwork on a case and Caseify does the fulfilling like a drop shipper. And you don't even have to send the case to someone. You just get the percentage that they send you as an artist. So think about other ways you can monetize. Don't think you have to monetize every single aspect, but these are just other ideas. I'm also thinking about hosting workshops in Latin America and also here in the States. And you can easily partner up with people like Paper Source is a really great example where you can go to a stationary store and say, hey, I'm an illustrator and I want to create this workshop about fashion illustration or greeting cards. And you can get people to come to this workshop and partner up with other brands that are already doing this type of work. I've also created content for brands like DirecTV, Corbell, and these brand partnerships start with you illustrating what you like to do. For me, it's the art of representation, making sure 
that I illustrate Latinas and have like beautiful, powerful quotes that they've said. So companies see this Instagram, this portfolio, and they say, she's already doing this. This is exactly what we want. So if you're not getting these brand deals, start creating work that you want to get paid for, even if it's like after your nine to five. And I know sometimes we get really drained from those jobs, but we have to continue to push forward because this is our insurance. This is what we're doing, what we're creating. This is the legacy. That's what we want to be remembered for. I want to go also touch back on Society6 and imprints. If you don't have a printer like I do, Society6 ship the art prints over to your customers. So you don't have to have this big setup. You could start super small. Like it doesn't have to be this huge launch, this huge thing. Actually, the smaller you start, the better. And you stop letting the imaginary roadblocks in your brain be the reason why you don't start. Exactly. I remember I started with one printer and what I learned from Amazon, actually print on demand, I said, you know what, instead of having inventory, I'm just going to put up these listings for sale on Etsy. And if someone wants to purchase them, then I print it out. And so I really just invest in the paper and the printer. And that's it. As an artist, at least, I don't have to have a big warehouse full of every single print and every single size. Like I said, start small. Even if you can't do a Shopify because you can't afford it right now, start with an Etsy. Make it small. And then I would say you have to start collaborating with different either Latina brands or other brands that are out there that might be doing the same things that you are. The other thing is West Elm, like these big, beautiful stores that have a specific aesthetic that your ideal customer has, you can go and do like a market with West Elm. So I also wanted to touch on artists and residency. I would say Google within your area if there are any programs or any grants for artists. I think that's the the number one thing for me. Like I started doing an artist and residency with Saks Fifth Avenue. I literally would come in every single holiday and create artwork for them. And they called me their artist in residence. And it's something where, again, I just started. I pitched myself. Like, I was scared, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to get over myself and I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. And for me, that's how I really got started. Like, making sure that I believed in myself first. And the people that would say, oh, but that's just, you're going to the mall and you're just drawing. And I'm like, but yeah, but I'm getting paid by these brands. I'm not spending my money on these brands, but I'm getting paid by them. So don't let anybody belittle you because then when you start getting picked up by these big brands and then also you start to get publicity and press, they're going to come back to you and be like, oh, but how did you do that? Can you show me how to do that? Mm. That's a scientifically proven fact that that shit will happen once you get successful, okay? Everybody wants to ride the train after it's left the station. I love just the vast array of ways that you've been able to use the power of the internet, especially to create and like build the impact of your brand. Because I think what a lot of people make the mistake of, especially if you're somebody who's creative, you think like, I'm just going to paint or I'm just going to draw and then I'm going to go to like a fair and like sell this stuff and have this audience that's very location specific and not really understanding that when you harness the power of the internet, like your audience grows exponentially. You literally have the entire world at your fingertips and it can help you scale your business to a place where it's actually sustainable. So Tell me how you've made the transition now from Web 2, which is the internet that we know and use today, to now this new frontier of Web 3, the metaverse, NFTs, all that stuff. That's the new frontier, if you will, of the internet. And so you're at the forefront of this. I'd love to know more about that story. Actually, it was thanks to you, Janice. You sent me a workshop to check out by Dr. Hans. And I really just wanted to learn what was going on with this Web3 thing, really to focus on how is it I can create a virtual art gallery. Like that was my end goal. Like the NFT things, that's cool. But I wanted to understand how can I build out a virtual gallery where anybody and everybody from anywhere can come visit me. Because as a Latina, it's really hard to go into a traditional art gallery and get your work shown. So really, it was really trying to find other ways to show my work. And so I just started joining Twitter spaces, and I started listening to different experts and started to listen to what everything that we're creating now in, in Web3. And 
I really was very cautious and I want to make sure that your listeners are super cautious. I wouldn't go into Web3 and just invest willy-nilly everywhere. I would say, please do your own research. I didn't invest in that many projects going in. I really just looked and researched and saw how is it that these people launch this project? How do they keep their communities engaged? And then what is it that I could do? What is the white space that nobody's doing? And for me, it was the art of Latina representation. It's always been my forefront in Web2. I'm bringing it to Web3. Latina should be on the blockchain represented because we don't have that many instances in even in Web2 of us being in a history book or being in a place where we're celebrated. So I've been experimenting with augmented reality for the last 10 years. I'm a super nerd when it comes to augmented reality. And finally, the technology caught up to my phone. And I said, I want to create a collection based on women that have inspired me and that have motivated me to be an artist and that have supported my journey. You are one of them, Janice. And I wanted to make sure that you're etched onto the blockchain because you're a badass mujer and you have so much to offer to our community. And truly, I think Web3 is about community. It's about building your community. And it's about telling your story authentically. It's not about going, launching something and leaving because that would be considered a cash grab. And I honestly think for me, the biggest thing is making sure that I do things authentically in the right way. I turned down so many big companies that wanted to launch an NFT collection because they did not want to serve the community. They just wanted to extract value literally just extract money from them and that's it so when you're going into a new territory you have to be very careful and make sure that you stick to your gut and your morals and know that not everything has to be a cash grab <laughs> like you have to do things ethically in the right way and for me I show up for my community every day I've learned so many things and met so many incredible people and have been part of different communities, specifically the Latin community in Web3. Because of it, I've been able to exhibit my work in Colombia. And that's a dream. Like, I never thought I was going to do that. Like, I never thought I was going to go back to my parents' home country and, and exhibit my work. That just doesn't happen. And so thanks to Hola Metaverso, who are a really great organization that focuses on education and learning and knowing How do we set up a wallet or how do we, as artists, create an NFT collection? Like they are the premier group, I would say, of educators that are educating the Latin community on these topics. And so at the end of the day, I wanted to come in authentically and I would come up and speak in Twitter spaces. And because of it, I was able to do a collaboration with Latinas in Tech and Corbell where I illustrated 30 Latinas in STEM. And that's a dream project too. Like, I would have never thought I would be able to do something like that. But because I was in the right place in the right time, there isn't that much competition in Web3 for artists. And so I would say do your own research. Do not invest your money like willy nilly, like really stop and think, can you provide services versus you trying to be a flipper or an investor? I think for me, there still needs to be a lot of regulation, especially after what happened with FTX, just be very cautious about where you put your money, where you invest, and who you listen to. I mean, obviously, if you're here, you're getting the best advice with Janice. That's kind of been my journey through Web3. And actually, in April, I will be a speaker at NFT NYC, one of the biggest conferences for Web3. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm just like, again, I'm a first-gen artist that just had a dream of making sure that Latinas were represented And so my panel is going to be about Latina representation within Web3. And so I'm going to be interviewing some of the most incredible women in the space that have really helped the Latin community flourish in Web3. So I'm really just there to learn. My core business still lives in Web2. I just apply the principles of why I do what I do in Web2 to Web3. Yeah. One thing that is, continues to be a resonating theme of your entire story is showing up even when you're scared. Like this 
amazing inner belief that you have for yourself is just so inspirational because you create opportunities where none exist by just giving yourself permission to show up in places where you don't necessarily see yourself represented. And I would love for you to give us some advice on like how we can embody that spirit, because truly, I think that that's the biggest obstacle that so many of us face is just like giving yourself permission to fucking show up. So how can we do that? Write a permission slip for yourself. Just write it out. Say, I am your name and I give myself permission to show up, to be a business owner, to be a leader, to be a mother, to be whatever you want to put in that list, just put it and know that you're going to start to attract people that are going to believe in you. Sometimes people that you've never met in person are going to be more fierce believers than yourself, than your family. So write that permission slip. Even if it's something that is so wild, like I believe I'm a multimillionaire business owner that is focused on Latina representation. Literally, that's what's in my journal. I literally have this and I read it out to myself every day because sometimes you wake up and they're going to be hard days. They're going to be hard days where you might not get the job. You might not get what you set off to do. You have to stay strong in your faith because For me, like manifestation, it starts with your mindset. It starts with, are you going to allow yourself to be the person you want to be? Or are you only serving that ideal society version of yourself? Like you could still be a mom and you still could do, you do your nine to five. And then when the kids are asleep, you can start doing your side business. And it's hard and it's difficult. Like I don't have children, but I want to make sure that people know that you can do it. Like my mom. She made arepas and empanadas to feed us. And she didn't have the opportunity to go after her dreams and chase them, but she sure as hell made sure that we did. That's the thing. Like, I think a lot of it to me is my mom. Like, if it wasn't for my mom, like every time I have something that is going on, she's the first person I call because she has believed in me so fiercely, especially in the times that I don't believe in myself. And with that also, like mentors like yourself, Signing up for programs like what Janice has with the blog bootcamp, I'm learning skills. They're going to add to my revenue streams. So invest in yourself, invest in who you are as a person, start learning through YouTube University. There's also Libby where you could download free audiobooks, start going into your self-care journey, I would call it, because a lot of us don't feel like we're worthy of our dreams but we fucking are. (laughs) Our ancestors did not just struggle for decades and generations for us to not seize the opportunity that we have today. Creating online businesses, creating different revenue streams, and not relying on a single corporation to tell us who we are, what the type of person that we're going to be. So I like to hype other women up. So if you are feeling some kind of way about what you want to do, send me a DM, Hola Lucia Diaz, on Instagram, on Twitter. Let me know what you're working through right now, because I feel like a lot of us need someone to support them, and we don't necessarily have that group of women around us. And at least for me, what I try to do is I try to create masterminds or send people off to other masterminds. Like, There's something so special about being in a group of women that are from your background, that are doing the hard things, that are doing things that to you seem impossible, but you could see it represented and reflected. And it's an example for you to follow. So give yourself permission, find yourself mentors, look for people that are out there. There are people out there that want to help you. And if the first mentor says no, Keep searching for the people that are really going to be kind of like your squad. And it takes a long time. And then also audit. There are people in your life that don't need to be there. I have cut people out left and right like Oprah. Be like, bye, you don't serve me anymore. Bye, you don't serve me anymore. Because sometimes that relationship felt like they were just extracting too much for me. That's the advice I want to give. Make sure, give the permission slip, find a mentor, and cut people out. Yeah, that's a motto for a successful life. That is a recipe for how to be successful. Show up for yourself, 
get rid of the people who are keeping you stuck and really curate a community of people that are going to help push you forward. I'm here for all of it. And I'm so here for everything that you're doing, Lucia. Tell me what's in store, how folks can find you. Let us know all the tea because if you don't know about this woman right now, you better get to know her because she's at the cusp of launching into another stratosphere. And I'm so excited to witness it. Well, thank you so much, Shanice. You can find me at Hola Lucia Diaz on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and also pretty soon YouTube. Um, and I'm super, super grateful to be able to have this opportunity to launch my website, buylucia.com. And then it's going to have my Shopify site. So it's shopbylucia.com. And I'm super, super excited because I'm going to be launching my birthday collection. This collection is for mujeres that have curves, mujeres that have afros, mujeres that have all types of hair because Latinas come in all shapes and sizes. And so with this collection, I'm super excited to start to represent us in a different light. And please go ahead and subscribe to my email list. You're going to be able to get all the cheese mint, all the tea. I will definitely be doing a lot of events now with different brands. So I might stop by your city. So make sure that you're on that email list. So you're the first person to know all the cheese mint about Lucia Diaz. So thank you so much, Shanice, for this beautiful interview. Again, like I said, it's a dream come true. Thank you so much for all the knowledge that you have given us and all the tools that you have given us. I feel like you a true leader within our community and have been someone that I've looked up for many years. So Thank congrats you. to you. And how is it that the community can continue to support you, Janice? You can definitely support the both of us by one, buying our incredible t-shirts that were designed by you, ma'am. Okay. I have an incredible NFT that is also thanks to you. And fingers crossed, you will be illustrating my book cover. So we're putting all that out there in the universe. Please go and follow Lucia Diaz and everything that she has going on. We're going to make sure to link everything in the episode show notes. And girlfriend, just keep killing it. You're incredible. Thank you so much, Shanice. I love you so much. And please leave a review if you're listening because that's something that you could do for free. And to me, this podcast delivers so much value that why not share it with your amigas, right? We all need community. And I think both of us are building incredible ones that uh, hopefully will leave lasting legacies and continue to increase and amplify the representation that we so need to see of ourselves in the world. So thank you so much for being here.